I'm Daniel Kola Pobelo, Senior Pastor, Latter Life Ministries, here in Lagos, Nigeria. I'm inviting you to 30 hours annual interdenominational retreat. It's a time of wonderful experience with God, a glorious time where people are revived, where revival fire is ignited in people. People come and they drop sin. People come and they get healed. People come and they get restored. Backsliders get restored. Uh, the sick get healed. It's also a wonderful time of prayer. A wonderful time where the truth of the word of God is being imparted. More than that, it's a wonderful time where uh, the truth about foundation is being taught. Where the body of Christ uh, is being healed by from long-term challenges, problems that have deferred prayers, problems that have deferred prayer mountains are being healed and people are being delivered. It's a time when people yearn to remain in God's presence. Those who have come, they don't want to leave, even at the expression of the 30 hours. It comes up every year in the month of June. This year, the hours is going to be online. You are going to participate in the hours at the confines of your room. God is bringing it to you. Instead of our normal gathering at a particular physical place, we are going to all put up in the spirit. You are going to be able to participate online. Uh, the Lord is bringing to us life in the confines of our room. So get all your gadgets ready. The date is 26th of June. 26th of June will begin by 6 p.m. Uh, Nigerian time, that's GMT plus one. All through uh, 27th of June, uh, which is Saturday, uh, 12 midnight. The Lord himself has given us a wonderful message to bring forth. So I want to plan yourself, I want to invite your friends, let them know uh, our garden this time around is in the spirit, it's online, we're going to gather physically. Here there is no barrier them of spirit, the Lord is going to do us good, souls are going to be revived, souls are going to be saved, there is going to be healing, and as you know, it's not all 30 hour stretch of prayers, it's, uh, it's highly compacted by the Holy Spirit. There is time for some ministration, there is time for the word of God, there is time for prayers, there is time for deliverance ministration, there is time for that heart cry, Shiloh Ah. If you have said before, you know what I'm talking about. At Shiloh Ah, we bring our affection to the Lord at the very early hours of the day, when we have not even brushed, and God has been doing wonders. This year, that has promises you a wonderful time of refreshing in the Lord. Make sure you don't miss it. Make sure you tell your friend and neighbor, particularly those who have not never participated before. And as you go, uh, not that day on your date, and plan to be uh, to participate, the Lord Himself is ready. He will do you good. He will encounter you. You will not be the same again, and you will sing a new song. The Lord bless you as you get ready. My dear people of God, the Lord bless you. I trust you are good, and I trust that the Lord has been keeping you. He will continue to keep you in the mighty name of Jesus. I'd like to inform you that our annual retreat, 30 Hours with God, is coming up again, precisely this month of June, from 26th Friday, 6 p.m., through 27th uh, Saturday, midnight. Uh, this year's program is different because we are not converging in a place because of the obvious, and the Lord has instructed us to uh, gather online. So we're going to be streaming, we're going to be broadcasting online. People are going to attend uh, 30 hours at the confines and convenient of their rooms. As such, uh, it requires uh, special uh, gadgets, unlike the usual, since we're going to be broadcasting. For uh, effective broadcasts that will be a blessing to God's people, we we'll require some gadgets, we we'll require a high profile uh, resolution camera, we require a projector, we require at least three uh, Core i7 laptops and some other gadgets. We require uh, uh, a dedicated uh, entire provision. We require diesel to, for power backup and very many of such. I want to encourage you, uh, even with the reality of the times, that I know there is something you can give. Peter and James were approached by that arm, by that uh, 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 paralyzed man, by the gate of the temple called Beautiful. And they said, look, we don't have silver and gold to give you, but there is something we have. We have the name of Jesus in Acts chapter 3, uh, verse 6. And in the name of Jesus Christ, they made that man whole. I know you have something to give. Maybe you have friends that can assist. Maybe you have debt, or maybe you have assets. Maybe you have some of these guardians that can be of assistance to us. The Lord will appreciate you. Remember, even in the, in the, in the wilderness, Jesus Christ saw that there was need to feed the multitude. 
The Bible says he asked the people, well, how shall we take care of this uh, multitude of people? Uh, in John 6, 5 to 9. The Bible says he himself knew what to do. God knows what to do. And he had positioned a young lad there. Maybe you are that young lad, or maybe you have that young lad with the five loaves and two fishes around you. So the Lord is trusting on you. Recall, he said in this word also, in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7, that the Lord loves a cheerful giver. The Lord is still trusting on us, even with the reality of time, that he will come to his aid and make this program a reality. Recall, it's a program for revival, for healing, for deliverance, where the people of God are revived, where healing and deliverance takes place, where the truth about foundation is being preached. The Lord will still want this program as he has commanded us to take place effective this year and be a blessing to multitude. So the Lord is counting on you. And as you make yourself available with that which you have, God will bless you greatly. Thank you so much for your uh, benevolence. Lord bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord bless you in the name of Jesus. It's another liberation hour. Father, we just want to thank you because you are God. Thank you for what you have been doing at our liberation hours. Thank you, Lord, for the healing that has been taking place. Thank you for deliverance. Thank you for yokes you have been breaking. Thank you for liberating sons of men. Take all glory in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray for every viewer, wherever you are hearing and are viewing right now, let the hands of God be straight towards you to heal you, to take away infirmity from you in the mighty name of Jesus. Let the hands of God be stretched into every contrary situation in your life to turn them around uh, for the better in the name of Jesus. Let the great God, the ones that rules and reigns over the affairs of men. So pretend over that situation. Every disturbing situation, uh, we address you. We ask you to give way in the name of Jesus. We ask according to the word of God, that as the people of God get encounter with the word of God, their solutions shall come in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we ask, O oh God, that you sanctify this hour. Let everyone hearing, Lord, receive the word of God. Let the word of God take root. Let the word of God be established. Let the word of God bring about transformation in every life in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jehovah God. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Uh, you're welcome to another liberation hour. The Lord bless you there. I want you to like this page. I want you to uh, inform your friends, your neighbors, your family members. Uh, ask them to connect to the link so that they can equally be blessed. As you do so, the Lord bless you mightily in the name of Jesus. Thank God for all those who have been uh, sharing testimonies and um, confirming what God has been doing through their lives. I'd like to hear your own testimonies also. Uh, so that we can bless God for you. Praise God. Uh, the theme of this hour celebration hour is escaping the challenges of foundational judgments. Escaping the challenges of foundational uh, judgments. Escaping the challenges of foundational judgments. Uh, we have come across very many people in the course of uh, ministry, having diverse challenges, diverse setbacks in different areas of life, some suffering uh, great losses in business, having setbacks uh, financially, and they wonder why such is so. Some have begin to experience untold hardship. Uh, they move up and come down. Some can't explain why uh, things around them are tough, why to be able to break through uh, in business has become a, a tough ordeal. Some are having it tough in the area of marriage. Some are having it tough in other areas of life. And um, uh, of importance, of note, is that very many of these people have looked at the situations around them and they cannot find any logical or rational reason for why these situations are like that. And they are wondering. Particularly, they become perplexed when they are Christians. And they say, Pastor, I don't know what is happening. I pay my tithe. I pay all my dues. I've been serving God with all my ability. I don't know why this should befall me. I don't know why. Uh, some say God is no longer hearing their prayers. And they wonder. Some succumb to faith and say, maybe it is their cross. Uh, beloved, we have such cases. Some, unusually, they have their assets wasting away. Uh, while some 
uh, just discovered that there are avenues of uh, leakages to their finances, you know, very many like that, and they are perplexed. It could be uh, because they are victims of foundational judgment. They could be victims of foundational judgment. Particularly, they have prayed, they have fasted. At times, they've gone through some spiritual, other spiritual programs, and they are wondering why it's as if those prayer exercises have not helped. Uh, it may not be that um, they are not praying effectively. It may not be that they don't have faith. Of course, most of these people exercise faith. They are sound in the word of God. Very many of those that we have met, uh, they are sound in the word of God. They exercise great faith, but the situations have refused to budge. The situations are still same alike. It could be because they are victims of um, foundational uh, judgments. Let's define the words one after the other. What is judgment? Uh, in the context of its usage, it means decision taken by an authority uh, over certain matters. Decision taken by an authority over certain uh, matters. It could be, uh, the authority could be God, it could be man, it could be Satan, it could be an institution, it could be a society, it could be a godly or ungodly authority. You know, and such judgments could be negative or positive. They could award rewards and they could award punishments as the case may be. They could award rights and they could punish. Praise God. But for the purposes of our teaching, uh, because we are looking at bringing about liberation unto soul, so we are looking at where the judgments are negative, where punishments are uh, pronounced. Praise God. And uh, we know what punishment is. A punishment is something uh, that uh, is made to compensate for a wrongdoing, you know, especially for a crime, sort of penalizing or afflicting uh, one for a wrongdoing. That's what a punishment is. Uh, but don't forget, we say we, the theme is escaping uh, challenges from escaping the challenges of foundational judgment. So we have explained what judgment is so, and, and what a punishment is. So what do we mean by foundation? Uh, by foundation, we mean your root. We mean your source. We mean your origin. Everyone has a foundation. Talking about an individual now. An individual has a foundation. You are founded in your parents. You are founded in your ancestors. You are rooted in your parents. You are rooted in your ancestors. You are rooted in your family. You are also rooted in your guidance somehow because they play the role of parents for you. And you are rooted in lands. Land of your birth. Land of your nativity. Land of residence. And all those lands that wherein you are based. Praise God. So, punishment are met out for sin, for offenses. And from the word of God, God uh, punishes for offenses, for violating his commandments, for uh, violating his uh, statutes, his rules, and regulations, for violating his laws. The same. The enemy also does so for those who are his loyalists. Satan punishes those who violate his rules and uh, regulations. If he punishes those who do contrary to the agreements that he has struck with them, uh, those who go contrary to his uh, instructions. So, uh, put, put the two words together, foundational punishment, we refer to punishment or forms of sufferings that are, are, are being inflicted on a person by virtue of transactions, sins, iniquities committed by parties in that person's um, foundation. So when we say financial punishment, we mean that punishments that are pronounced on a person or that come upon a person as a result of the judgment for sin, not of that person, but of parties in that person's foundation, of that person's parents, of that person's ancestors, of that person's uh, uh, family member guardians, or, or lands from where the person uh, heals from. So when punishment for sin of such parties are brought upon a person, then they become what? Uh, foundational punishment. Punishment that come uh, from one's uh, foundation. We look at the first case. We're looking at two cases today uh, in establishing this truth before we begin uh, to pray. We look at case one. Second Samuel chapter 12. 
verse 14 to 18. Second Samuel chapter 12, uh, verses 14 to 18. Uh, from 12, it says, Howbeit, because by this deed uh, thou hast given great occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme the child, to blaspheme, the child also that is born unto thee shall surely die. This, let me go, give us the background. This was the judgment pronounced by God upon David when he went and slept with another man's wife, uh, the wife of Bathsheba, the wife of Uriah. And then Uriah became, um, Bathsheba became pregnant, you know, and um, God convicted David of his sin. So he made this pronouncement that the child that is born unto him shall surely die. And when you read from verse 15, it says, And Nathan departed unto his house, and the Lord struck the child that Uriah's wife bare unto David, and it was what? Very sick. And very sick. David therefore besought God for the child, and David fasted and went in and lay all night upon the earth. Upon the earth. And the elders of his house arose and went to him to raise him up from the earth. But he would not, neither did he eat bread with them. And it came to pass on the seventh day that the child died. And the servant of David feared to tell him that the child was dead. For they said, Behold, while the child was yet alive, we spake unto him, and he would not hearken unto our voice. How will he then vex himself if we tell him that the child is uh, dead? Praise God. So, just as the Lord had pronounced on, on David that the child that came as a result of this your sinful act will surely die uh, through the mouth of the prophet. From where we read, the child actually died. Don't forget, we're looking at um, uh, escaping punishment from what? Uh, es escaping challenges from foundational judgment. Praise God. Fa escaping punishment from foundational judgment. Let's look at the second case. At the time, second case, 1 Kings 14, uh, we read from verse 1 up till uh, verse 12. 1 Kings 14, from verse 1 to 12. This is another case. Um, I give us the background. This was um, Jeroboam who became king uh, after, after Solomon. The kingdom was divided between Rehoboam and Jeroboam. Praise God. And uh, Jeroboam did things that offended the Lord and uh, God pronounced at the point things went wrong, went rough for him. Uh, his son Abijah became sick and um, he now sent to the prophet Ahijah, who was there for him at the beginning, who pronounced uh, that he would become king. So let's read from verse 1 now of 1 Kings 14. It says, And at that time Abijah, the son of Jeroboam, fell sick, and Jeroboam said to his wife, Arise, I pray thee, and disguise thyself, that thou be not known to be the wife of Jeroboam, and get thee to Shiloh. Behold, there, there is Ahijah the prophet, we told me that I should be king over his, this people. And take with thee ten loaves and kernels and a cruise of honey, honey. And go to him, and he shall tell thee what shall become of the child. And Jeroboam's wife did so, and arose, and went to Shiloh, and came to the house of Ahijah. But Ahijah could not see, for his eyes were, his eyes were set by reason of his age. And the Lord said unto Ahijah, Behold, the wife of Jeroboam cometh to ask a thing of thee for her son, for he is sick. Thus and thus shalt thou say unto her, for it shall be when she cometh in that she shall feign herself to be another woman. And it was so when Ahijah heard the sound of her feet, as she came in at the door, that he said, Come in, thou wife of Jeroboam. Why finish thyself to be another? For I am sent to thee with heavy tidings. Go tell Jeroboam, thus said the Lord God of Israel. For as much as I exhorted thee 
from among the people and made thee prince over my people Israel and rent the kingdom away from the house of David and gave it thee. And yet thou hast not been as my servant David who kept my commandments and who followed me with all this heart to do that only which was right in my eyes. Verse 9. But hast done evil above all that were before thee for thou hast gone and made thee other gods and molten images to provoke me to anger and hast cast me behind thy back. Therefore, behold, I will bring evil upon the house of Jeroboam and will cut off Je from Jeroboam him that pisseth against the wall and him that is shut up and left in Israel and will take away the remnants of the house of Jeroboam as a man taketh what? Away dung till it be what all gone. Take note of this verse 11. He said, He that died of Jeroboam in the city shall the dogs eat. And him that died in the field shall the fowls of the air eat. For the Lord hath spoken it. Verse 12. Arise thou therefore, get thee to thy own house. And when thy feet enter into the city, the child shall die. This was a heavy pronouncement, heavy punishment placed by God upon Jeroboam because God took the major part of the kingdom of Israel. Ten tribes out of the twelve tribes of Israel, God gave to Jeroboam who was serving uh, Solomon at that time. He took it away from his son, Rehoboam. You know, and uh, because of the sin of Solomon. But uh, in foolishness, so to speak, Jeroboam did worse than uh, even the person who was judge upon which he was given the, the, the kingdom. He did worse than that and it pained God. And God brought this punishment upon him. He brought this judgment upon him. This judgment was upon Jeroboam. Praise God. And the judgment was that he will cut off the, the remnant of Jeroboam. Jeroboam will not have anyone to succeed him. He will not have any seed. He said, because of the evil that he did, he even said, wherever, wherever they die, but we eat them up. That was the judgment placed on the house of uh, uh, Jeroboam. Let's go to verse 17 of that First Corinthians, First Kings 14. Uh, verse 17. And Jeroboam's wife arose and departed and came to Teza. And when she came to the threshold of the door, the child died. The child died according to uh, the word of the law. Um, from these two cases, we saw uh, punishment, judgment placed upon fathers, bringing punishment upon the sons, upon their seed. Judgment placed upon uh, David, bringing uh, punishment upon the seed, the child that came through him and Bathsheba. Judgment placed upon uh, Jeroboam, bringing punishment upon his son. You know, and beloved, uh, the, the punishment that he brought upon these two, in these two cases, were terminal punishment, which was death. But in some cases, uh, they may not get terminal like that. In some cases, it could be sicknesses, in some cases, it could be poverty. In some cases, it could be no marriage. In some cases, it could be failed marriage. In some cases, it could be, uh, it could be rising and falling. In some cases, it could be mental challenges. We have come across cases where people were, were having mental challenges as punishment, as a result of judgment placed upon parents, upon, gra upon grandparents. In which case, uh, the challenge or challenges they were having was as a result of punishment from the judgment placed upon their fathers, placed upon their mothers, placed upon their guardian, placed upon uh, grandparents. We have cases of infirmities. We have cases of sicknesses. We have cases of poverty, you know, financial limitation, marital challenges, you know, even spiritual limitations coming as a result of uh, judgments that were placed upon parties in people's um, foundation. Like I said, for that of uh, for the case of the child that came from David through Bathsheba, it was untimely death. In fact, it was stillbirth. The child died 
I mean, it was not still bad. The child, the child was born and took ill. It was uh, uh, infant death. After the child was born, the Lord struck the child with illness. And for you to know everything done, uh, God had said it anyway. The, David prayed, David fasted, and to no avail. That's why when it is like this, prayers and fasting may not help because the challenge that was involved had, was rooted in something that hadn't been, been for, uh, that had not been uh, taken care of. It, you know, for the case of um, uh, Abijah, the son of Jeroboam, he was already grown up when the sickness came. And they did everything, they did everything, all the treatment and all that. Uh, the king had access to the best treatment to no avail. And he was such a precious child to uh, Jeroboam. And then he sent, and God said, look, uh, because of this, this, is, this child's sickness is a punishment as a result of the judgment upon you, Jeroboam. And God said, look, uh, he will before, as you be, he told the wife, before you get to the church of this, that child will pass we pass away. And come, let's see what the Lord also said about the child. Because God said, if you read further in between the verses, which were not read for time, God said that only that child will, will die and be buried. Because in him was found, uh, he, he had good acts. So, in the child himself, the child was okay. The child did what was right. He was only cut short as a result or as punishment for the judgment placed upon his father. You know, he said he would be, that was the only child that would get befitting burial because in him was found good acts. Yet, he became sick and he had to die because of the judgment placed on his father, on uh, the house of uh, Jeroboam. Beloved, we have come across very many cases like this where people uh, are being punished, are being punished as judgment for sins of parents, for sins of ancestors. You know, I recall uh, the case of a man who, by the time I met, was had once made so much money. But by the time I met him, he was so much in penury, you know, so much in penury. But by the time we got talking and we began to pray, investigative prayers to be able to know where the challenge was coming from, we got to know that it was rooted in his grandfather, you know, who mismanaged people's money and a, a lot of uh, curses were placed upon him. And this son of his was a victim of such. And until that information, though the son even knew about the information, but never could think that it would be uh, the cause of his woe. But by the time uh, we began to ask him, uh, some of his dreams pointed, were pointed to the grandfather, were pointed to the grandfather. When I said, tell me, tell us about this grandfather. And it was then he told us the circumstances, the information about the acts, the sins, the iniquities of those grandfathers. And that was the thing that was treated in helping him and things reversed in his case. Praise God. I recall uh, the case of another, uh, another set of people. These were sons of the same father. They were all in financial mess. They were all in financial mess. Uh, by the time we investigated, why it was so? Because they had prayed, they have gone for ministrations in diverse places, and help was not coming. And um, we saw that it, they, were on, they were suffering punishment for uh, judgment on their family. How did we know? Uh, we got to know that their father, was it a father or grandfather? I can't recall vividly now, but one of the two, either the father or the grandfather, uh, was said to be uh, a money lender in those days. He was lending people money. And he will ask people to secure their borrowings with assets. And after that, he will go and do, he will do works of sorcery, enchantment, and charm the people so that they will be unable to pay back uh, the money he lent to them. You know, and then he will have secured great assets. Assets what uh, 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 four times, five times the borrowings. And like this, the people were meant, were, people were forfeiting the assets. And some people got to know that this man was wicked. He was using enchantment upon them because they strove to be able to pay back. They couldn't. And like that, he amassed uh, wealth in an evil way. He would charm them so that he would not be able to pay the little money he lent to them. And he would take over their properties because of their inability to pay back. That was the evil. And judgments were placed upon him. And by the time he had passed on, 
the grandchildren were paying. They were being punished financially for that judgment that was placed upon their father. Praise God. So we have cases like this. We have cases where uh, it was, I recall another case uh, of a person I had to pray with uh, some years back while ministering. Uh, we saw that um, uh, this person had gone through Cicera session in having uh, a child and um, uh, the next time we were agreeing in prayer with this person, uh, such that the Lord will allow her, will be merciful to allow her to give back normally. And I saw that as I was praying, the sign I was getting was that don't bother yourself. It had to be like that. Don't bother yourself. It had to be like that. And I told this man, this is the signal that I was getting. And I was wondering why God would say it had to be like that. Not that that person had medical or uh, had um, physiological deformation that shouldn't allow her to give birth normally. So I took notice of it. The person went to help, to get help in other places also, but with all the prayer helps uh, uh, asked for, uh, she still had to bring forth through Caesarea session, you know. Uh, thereafter, I didn't give up. I began to ponder and ask God, why, Lord, wouldn't you accede to our cry? Why must this person uh, give back like that? So, in the course of my investigation, I saw that it was not only limited to her. I saw that um, this trend was also extended to cousins. I saw that it was even extended to some family members who were not yet married, who were not yet pregnant. There had been occasions for them to be opened up, for them to be opened up through surgery. And it was always, they were always opened up uh, by the belly. Praise God. So it got me thinking, and I began to pray. I began to pray, and then to inquire from this first lady uh, about the background. You know, and from my inquiry, I got to know that it was actually a punishment as a result of judgment placed on a grandfather. The grandfather then uh, was a renowned uh, traditional healer. You know, and then. Um, the story had it that for the type of power that he amassed, that there were times he ripped open the womb of uh, pregnant people to take photos and all that for uh, the local power and enchantment. So he had ripped open the womb of the tummy of pregnant women. And uh, the judgment was upon him that that is how the daughters from him, as daughters that come from, from him, he sits. They, their tummy will be uh, ripped open. So this was a grandfather. So we had granddaughters now having their womb ripped open uh, as a result of um, childbearing. As a result, there are diverse reasons. They were just uh, even one that had no reason. The child was properly presented. You know, the daughter just insisted without any reason that the, 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 she must go through CS. So we have come across very many of these cases. People are. Uh, serving punishment, people having pains, people suffering challenges as a result of, um, as punishment for judgments pronounced upon their parents. Praise God. And um, this is not new. Even our Lord Jesus Christ uh, corroborated this in the book of Matthew 23. Uh, Jesus Christ spoke about how that judgment will be extended uh, to the current uh, generation. Matthew 23 uh, verses 34 to 36. Matthew 23, 34 to 36. Say, Wherefore, behold, I send unto you prophets and wise men and scribes, and some of them ye shall kill and crucify, and some of them ye shall scourge in your synagogues and persecute them for, from city to city, that upon you may come, take note of this, verse 34, that upon you may come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth from the blood of righteous Abel unto the blood of Zechariah, son of Barakias, whom ye slew between the temple and the altar. Between the temple and the altar. Look at verse 36. He said, Verily I say unto you, all these shall come upon this generation. So Jesus Christ was the one that made this pronouncement that the current generation shall bear punishment, not only for theirs, but those that will come as judgment pronounced upon their fathers will also come upon them. This is not new. This 
follows the principle of God, the principle of inheritance. Just as you inherit good things, so you become due to inherit negative things, to inherit judgment, to inherit punishment uh, that are met upon the fathers. Uh, you could also confirm this, I think, in Revelation chapter 2. Uh, Christ was talking there to a particular church. Uh, Revelation chapter 2, uh, verse um, uh, 20, 20 up to 20, Revelation 2, 20 to 23. Uh, Jesus Christ was talking to, the, to, to that church, the church in Thyatira. In verse 20, he said, Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou suffered, thou allowed that woman Jezebel, which called herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servant, to commit fornication, to eat things sacrificed unto idol. He said, I gave her space to repent for her communication, and she repented not. Look at what Jesus Christ said he would do. He said, Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into what? Great tribulation. Except they repent of their deeds. Now look at verse 23. He said, I will kill what? Her children. Her children. Jesus, Jesus Christ talking. He was going to kill. He said he will kill the children. Why? He said, I will kill the children with death and all the churches shall know that I am he which searches the reins and hearts and I will give unto every one of you according to your works. So, uh, God punishes. God bring the punishment as a result of judgment upon the parent, upon the assessors, they come upon uh, the seeds. Um, because he said, he also confirms that in Exodus 20 verse 5, Exodus 20 uh, verse 5, God said there that thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them, for I the Lord thy God am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. It's in the Old Testament. It's in the New Testament. Jesus Christ said it, you know. And you say, ah, but pastor, the scripture says, uh, why should the, the, the son shall not bear the iniquity of the father, uh, the soul that sinned shall die. When you read Ezekiel 18 verse 19, there's a condition stipulated there that makes the son to escape bearing the iniquity of the father, that makes that proverb to cease in Israel. Ezekiel 18 verse 9 says, ye shall yet, yet say ye, why doth not the son, that is, why it has to change, why the prayer has to cease, why does not the son bear the iniquity of the father? When the son had done that which is lawful and right, and had kept all my statutes, and had done them, he shall surely live. He will not bear the iniquity of the father. You can read down to 20. Uh, that uh, requirement in verse 19 is what determines verse 20. That says the soul that sinned, it shall not, it shall die. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father, neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. That is when the son has done what is lawful and right, that is what is right and what is required by law. You now ask me, what is it that is required by law? Then you go to Leviticus 26, uh, from 39 to 42, you will see that which the law requires for the son to escape judgment, to escape punishment for the iniquity of the father. Leviticus 26 from verse 39. It says, and they that are left of you, this is what the law stipulates, shall pine away in their iniquity in your enemy's land and also in the iniquities of their fathers shall they pine away with them. It said they will waste, they will suffer punishment of their iniquity and those of their fathers. But there is a caveat here in verse 40. It says, if they shall confess, if they shall confess their iniquity and the iniquity of their father, the two, personal and foundational, with their trespasses, which they trespass against me, and also they have worked contrary unto me, and that I also have worked contrary unto them, I have brought them into the lands of their enemies. If their uncircumcised heart be humbled, and they then accept of the punishment of their iniquity. God is saying that, look, if they don't blame him, if they accept that uh, what is happening to them, the challenges that you are having, if you accept that uh, the challenges are coming as punishments for sin, for iniquity, though you may not know of yourself, of your parents, and you confess those sins, you repent of them, you ask for forgiveness, and you obtain forgiveness from God. It now says, then, in verse 42, that is the escape route, then will I remember my covenant with Jacob and also my covenant with Isaac and also my covenant with Abraham will I remember and I will remember the land. It is when you have done that 
when you have repented, acknowledge your sins, those of your fathers, then and you ask for forgiveness and you are pardoned. That is when God will forgive. He will now remember the covenant, the covenant and his promises. He will remember the promises that he has made in his world. That is when he will arise and hear your cry. The, as long as the iniquities are there, either personal or foundational, that make you qualify for certain punishment as judgment, God will suspend the promises. They won't work. You quote them, quote them, you stand on them, declare them fast, they won't work. Worst case, he will be showing you that, look, there is something there, not allowing me to hear you. There is something there, not allowing me to be able to bring you out. There is something there saying you must suffer, suffer this uh, punishment. Praise God. But once you do the needful and you come before the Lord, you acknowledge that, look, what is happening uh, is punishment for, as a result of judgment upon you for those things that you did and those of your fathers. And you cry to God in mercy and forgiveness and the Lord forgives, then he will remember and lift the judgment and put an end to those punishments and then things will turn around. Today, I trust God that those challenges that have been trailing you, those challenges that have made life difficult, those challenges that have been humbling you, those challenges that have been limiting you in diverse areas of life, in marriage, in fruitfulness, in prosperity, in your calling, in your ministry, as you cry to God and you obtain mercy and forgiveness for those judgments from your foundation that brought them as punishment, the Lord will hear your cry, the Lord will terminate those punishments and things shall turn around for you in the mighty name of Jesus. The good news is that uh, in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7, it says, In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our sins according to the riches of his grace. We have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our sins. Christ has paid for those sins. He has made provision, and we have obtained forgiveness, and he has been redeemed from the punishment through the instrument of his blood. So we are going to apply that today to say, Lord, we are sorry, and then to bring the payment that Christ has made to secure our release from the punishment of uh, those uh, sins. God will forgive, but God is just. But uh, somebody has paid for the punishment so that we can be released. And in Romans chapter 4, verse 25, we're told that who was delivered for our offenses, talking about just Christ, he was delivered for our offenses, he was raised for our justification. Christ has paid the price. So, uh, we're going to go to God we're on this basis to and cry for mercy and forgiveness of those sins and iniquities that have brought judgment upon us and have brought punishment uh, upon diverse areas of our lives. And as you cry to God today and you bring adequate repentance before the Lord, the Lord will hear and put an end to those punishments and things will turn around for you in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's begin to thank God right now for what we have had. It's time uh, to escape. It's time to escape uh, judgments. It's time to escape the judgment for uh, punishment as a result of your financial challenges. It's time to escape those challenges that foundational judgments have brought. Begin to thank the Lord. Say, Lord, I thank you for what I have had. Thank you for enlightening my understanding. Thank you, Lord, my Father. Open your mouth and thank God. Open your mouth and appreciate him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank him. Thank him. Lord, I thank you. For counting me worthy of escape. Thank you, Lord, my Father. Thank him, thank him, thank him. Lord, I thank you. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Next prayer point is to ask for God's mercy. Uh, you cannot be tired of asking for God's mercy. Ask the Lord to have mercy on you uh, because the Bible says, by mercy and by uh, truth, iniquities are purged. Say, Lord, have mercy on me. Lord, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me, Lord, my Father. Have mercy on me. Be merciful to me. Stretch your hand of mercy into my life. Show me your mercy, O Lord God. Ask the Lord for mercy. Ask him for mercy. Lord, be merciful to me. Lord, show me your mercy. Show me, O Lord, your mercy. Show me your mercy, O Lord, my Father. Lord, show me your mercy. In the mighty name of Jesus. Show me your mercy, O Lord God. Ask for God's mercy sufficiently. Ask him to have mercy on you. Ask him to have mercy on you. Ask him to have mercy on you. That you may be deemed qualified of escape of the punishment. Some of us, the the, the iniquities are so strong that the, the judgments are, we've seen, look at cases where God has pronounced everlasting judgment. It says the sin shall not be put forever. It will take the mercy of God for God to look around again, particularly because of the price Christ has paid. We must, incur, we must get God's mercy. Cry to God for mercy. Cry to God for mercy. Lord, have mercy, O God. Have mercy, O God. 
have mercy. Have mercy, O oh God, Lord, have mercy. I ask for your mercy today. Ask God for mercy. Lord, be merciful to me, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Ask God for illumination now. Tell the Lord, say, Lord, shine your light into my life once again. Shine your light into my life. Shine your light into my foundation. Illuminate me, O oh God. Bring my life into your light. Let nothing about me be hidden. Bring my life into your light. Shine your light, O oh God. Illuminate me, my Father. Illuminate me, O oh Lord God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, illuminate me. Lord, illuminate me. Lord, illuminate me. In the mighty name of Jesus. Illuminate me, O oh Lord God. Illuminate me, O oh Lord God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, illuminate me. Illuminate me, my Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. You will tell the Lord, say, so, O oh Lord, reveal to me judgment for the sins and iniquities of my parents that may be affecting my life. O oh Lord, reveal to me judgments for the sins and iniquities of my parents that may be affecting my life. Lord, reveal to me. Reveal to me, O oh Lord God, judgments for the sins and iniquities of my parents that may still be affecting my life. Reveal to me. Reveal to me. O oh Lord, reveal to me judgments, O oh Lord, for the sins and iniquities of my parents. Lord, reveal them to me. Sins, judgment for sins and iniquities of my parents that may be affecting my life. Reveal to me, O Lord God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. One of the reasons why we need to pray for revelation is to know how to treat it. Let me tell you another uh, case that we came across in ministry. There was a case of this man um, working, I think, in the financial industry in, in those days. At a point in time, um, he began to see strange things. He was seeing a ghost that nobody else was seeing. It was only him that was seeing it and was almost going to run in sin. You know, and he was a Christian. And they had prayed for him. They had prayed for him. They had taken time to run him through deliverance and all that. Yet, this uh, strange appearance that he was seeing uh, was haunting him and was almost going to make him insane. You know, so uh, inquiry, prayer of inquiry was now commenced. And the Lord brought it out revealed it that his father who was already late in his lifetime killed a man and buried that man successfully without anybody knowing his father his father killed and buried successfully and god in his mercy gave the exact spot where this man uh where the man the victim was buried praise god praise god and gave details and they could recollect that uh, at their community at that time, that with time that man was missing, nobody knew that it was this brother's father that killed the man. You know, uh, such a case is not just weeks away. It's not just it doesn't end with God forgive me. There is there are steps of restitution that have to be done for that pain to be discharged. You know, uh, they had to go. They had to uh, this, after that revelation, they went to the place as shown by God. They went to play as shown by God in the vision that God gave. They went to the place and they dug the place. They excavated and they found the bones of the victim. Just as the Lord has said and shown in the vision. That was where the victim was buried. So uh, this, this, some of the steps that needed to be taken for the brother to escape was that they had to go and confess this iniquity to the family of that victim. They had to go and confess to the family of that person. They went and confessed it and then they had to dig out the bones and give that uh, victim befitting burial. And the family had to forgive and pray for the family and pray for this brother. That was when that affliction left. So that's why we're asking for revelation. Because it doesn't, in some cases, it doesn't just end at, oh Lord, have mercy, oh Lord, forgive me. Like there are steps that had to be taken for total reconciliation. So cry to God. Now add it. Say, so Lord, reveal to me judgment for sins and iniquities of my parents, of my ancestors that have, that have been bringing punishment upon my life. Oh Lord, reveal to me judgments for sins and iniquities. Reveal judgment. Reveal sins and iniquities of my parents, sins and iniquities of my ancestors, sins and iniquities from the lands that I have lived. Some people lived in certain lands, but there are judgments in those lands that are bringing punishment upon them. They just moved into an apartment. And the judgment on that apartment will be afflicting. It will also lives there. I've seen cases like that where people could not give birth. By virtue, not because of anything, just by packing in into an apartment where judgments have been placed and punishment will be inflicted on 
everyone that lives in that place, ask the Lord to reveal to you. Lord, reveal to me. Reveal to me, O oh God, whatever uh, uh, source of foundational judgment that is inflicting punishment upon me, upon my marriage, upon my finances, upon the work of my hands. Lord, reveal to me. Reveal to me the source of any judgment. Judgment from the sins and iniquities of my parents. Judgment from the sins and iniquities of my ancestors. Judgment from the sins and iniquities from my lands. Inflicting punishment upon me. Oh, Lord, reveal to me. I want to be free. Let the Lord reveal to you. Oh, Lord, reveal to me. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Next is to cry to God for forgiveness. Once uh, God, you have this, you have discovered, you need to now cry to God for forgiveness. Ask the Lord, the Father, forgive me. The sins and iniquities of my parents, the sins and iniquities of my ancestors, of my guardians, of the owners of the lands, elders of the land, houses, where I have passed through, that are inflicting punishment upon me. Oh Lord, have mercy. That you don't know about it is not the case. We have seen from the word of God that you have to confess the sin and yours as if you did it. So you cry to God. Say, Lord, forgive me. Forgive me of those sins. Forgive me of those iniquities committed by my parents, committed by my ancestors, committed by the lands, elders of the lands, owners of the lands, that uh, which judgment have been bringing punishment upon my life in diverse areas of life. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Oh, Lord, forgive me. Forgive me, oh, God. Forgive me. The judgment uh, from the house that I'm living in, of the landowners, of the land community owners bring afflicting me, bringing punishment upon my life, upon my finance, upon my marriage, upon my health. Lord, forgive me. Lord, forgive me. Lord, forgive me. Judgment uh, 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 for the sins and iniquities of my parents, of my guardians, of my ancestors, inflicting punishment upon my life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, forgive me. Lord, forgive me. Affecting finance, affecting marriage, affecting fruitfulness, affecting health, affecting progress in any areas of life, bringing liberty. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Oh, Lord, forgive. Ask the Lord to forgive. Ask the Lord to forgive. Lord, have mercy. Lord, forgive. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jehovah God. In Jesus' mighty name, uh, we have prayed. Now you have to separate yourself from those sins and iniquities uh, for to, so that you are not taken in as a seed and continually being visited. So you will declare after me like this, you, you mention your name, say I, I mention your name, say I, uh, Daniel Kola Pobelo, I renounce, I reject, and I separate myself from all forms of sins and iniquities from my foundation. All sorts, all sorts of sins and iniquities from my foundation, committed by my parents, committed by my uh, guardians, by my ancestors, from my land that have brought punishment upon my life. Lord, I separate myself. I declare I am not part of, part of those sins. I am not part of those iniquities. I am not part of those transactions that are bring quick judgments. I will be bringing punishment upon my life. I separate myself from those transactions. I separate myself from those acts of sins, acts of acts of iniquities, acts of offenses, Lord, that they did. I am not part of it. I renounce them. I reject them. I separate myself from all their involvement that have brought uh, judgment and punishment upon my life. Lord, I repent of them. Lord, I separate myself from them. In the mighty name of Jesus, you will now cry to God that by his mercy, he should lift any judgment that is coming from him, any judgment from the Father Lord, any judgment from you upon my uh, uh, judgment from you upon my parents, upon my ancestors, upon my lands that has been bringing punishment upon me in different areas. Oh Lord, I ask, lift the judgment, O oh God, terminate the punishment, lift the judgment, O oh God, upon my life and terminate the punishment. Oh Lord, lift that judgment upon me as a seed, judgment upon my parents, judgment upon my ancestors, judgment upon my lands, judgment that upon whichever area, Lord, I'm connected from my foundation that have been bringing punishment upon me. Oh Lord, lift the judgment. Oh Lord, lift the judgment. Oh Lord, lift the judgment. Terminate the punishment, O God. Lift the judgment, O Lord God. O Lord, lift the judgment. O Lord, lift the judgment. O Lord, lift the judgment. Terminate the punishment, O God. Terminate the punishment, O God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Take your final prayer like this and say, Father Lord, Father Lord, put an end to any punishment that I have been going through, that I have been serving as a result of judgments for my foundation. O Lord, in your mercy, put an end, O God, to any punishment that I've been going through, 
punishment in the area of marriage, punishment in getting married, punishment in enjoying marriage, punishment in prosperity, punishment in moving forward in life, punishment in finances, punishment in any area of life that I have been going through as a result of foundational judgment. Oh Lord, put an end to it. By your mercy, O God, put an end to it. Put an end to it. In the mighty name of Jesus, oh Lord, put an end to it. Oh Lord, put an end to it. Lord, put an end to it. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. I'm praying for us now. Father, we want to thank you. We want to bless your name. Lord, I just want to remind you of your word. In Psalm 103, uh, verses 2 to 4. I want to remind you of your word. You said, bless. Your word says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. What are these benefits? The first one, who forgiveth all thy iniquities. Therefore, I ask, O God, all the sins and iniquities that are uh, brought about judgments, Lord, and then punishment. Father, forgive today. Forgive today, O God. Over your sons and daughters that have cried to you, Lord, forgive those sins. Forgive those iniquities. In the name of Jesus. And uh, uh, verse 4 of that verse, it says, who redeemed thy life from destruction. Lord, you redeem life from destruction is the punishment that should come as a result of judgment for sin. Therefore, oh God, if you are forgiven, I ask, O oh God, every judge, every punishment that, sh- that has been upon anyone as judgment for sin, O oh God, today, Father, terminate it. O oh Lord, terminate it. Let that punishment be terminated in the name of Jesus. Let it be terminated. Lord, I ask, therefore, that all the, to- all the yokes that have been attached to people's lives as punishment. Let the yoke be broken in the name of Jesus Christ. Let every embargo be lifted in the name of Jesus Christ. Let the punishment of diseases, punishment of infirmity, punishment of frustration, punishment of late marriage, punishment of poverty, punishment of, of mental failure, punishment of not enjoying marriage, punishment of financial woes, financial limitation of barrenness, all those punishments, even that of insanity, mental limitation, spiritual limitation, Punishment of untimely death, whatever Lord we command, let it be terminated today in the name of Jesus. Let it be terminated. Let all the future punishment that are hanging be cancelled in the name of Jesus Christ. We ask for a reversal because He says, Who forgiveth all thy iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. Therefore, every situation that will come upon every man, as a result of this, we command healing in the name of Jesus Christ. We command healing. And He says, Who crowned thee? with loving kindness and tender mercies. Therefore, God, we command restoration for every limitation, everything that they have suffered as a result of punishment for financial judgment. Let there be restoration of homes, of marriages, of prosperity. Restoration of of sound health, of joy and gladness, of prosperity. Restoration into that very area where the enemy has taken you down. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We decree a reversal, a new season unto you. In the name of Jesus Christ. That embargo is lifted. It's a new season for you. Begin to break through into marriage, into fruitfulness, into prosperity. What you have been unable to do before, the Lord brings you in. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. No more punishment. No more punishment. It's a new season for you. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Blessed be your name. For in Jesus' mighty name, it is settled. Amen. The Lord bless you. Uh, By the mercy of God, as you have been uh, informed earlier, and will still be informed, we are preparing for our annual retreat, 30 Hours with God International Program. You will be briefed uh, in full after this program. Uh, but just to remind you, because of our preparation, our uh, liberation hour is no more daily as it is. I haven't had it today. We're going to skip tomorrow to plan for 30 hours. And by Thursday, by His Grace, 7 p.m. Nigerian time, we're going to be live again for liberation hour. Uh, stay connected. And for next week, uh, it's going to be just one day in the week. It's just going to be on Tuesday. Uh, just understand with us so that we, the Lord can get us ready for 30 hours. It is well with you. Uh, till I come your way on Thursday, stay liberated and God bless you. I'm Daniel Kola Pobelo, Senior Pastor, Latter Life Ministries here in Lagos, Nigeria. I'm inviting you to 30 hours annual international retreat. It's a time of wonderful experience with God, a glorious time where people are revived where revival fire is ignited in people. People come and they drop sin. People come and they get healed. People come and they get restored. Backsliders get restored. Uh, the sick get healed. It's also a wonderful time of prayer. A wonderful time where the truth of the word of God is being imparted. More than that, it's a wonderful time where 
uh, the truth about foundation is being taught. We are the body of Christ uh, is being healed by from long-term challenges, problems that have deferred prayers, problems that have deferred prayer mountains are being healed and people are being delivered. It's a time when people yearn to remain in God's presence. Those who have come, they don't want to leave, even at the expression of the 30 hours. It comes up every year in the month of June. This year, let us is going to be online. You are going to participate in text us at the confines of your room. God is bringing it to you. Instead of our normal gathering at a particular physical place, we are going to all put up in the spirit. You are going to be able to participate online. Uh, the Lord is bringing it to us live in the confines of our room. So get all your gadgets ready. The date is 26th of June. 26th of June will begin by 6 p.m. Uh, Nigerian time, that's GMT plus one. All through uh, 27th of June, uh, which is Saturday, uh, 12 midnight. The Lord himself has given us a wonderful message to bring forth. So I want to plan yourself, I want to invite your friends, let them know uh, our garden this time around is in the spirit, it's online. We're going to gather physically. Yet there is no barrier them on spirit. The Lord is going to do us good. Souls are going to be revived. Souls are going to be saved. There is going to be healing. And as you know, it's not all 30 hours stretch of prayers. It's, uh, it's highly compacted by the Holy Spirit. There is time for some ministration. There is time for the word of God. There is time for prayers. There is time for deliverance ministration. There is time for that heart cry, Shiloh if you have said before, you know what I'm talking about. As you know, uh, we bring our affection to the Lord at the very early hours of the day, when we have not even brushed, and God has been doing wonders. This year, that has promises you a wonderful time of refreshing in the Lord. Make sure you don't miss it. Make sure you tell your friends and neighbor, particularly those who have not never participated before. And as you go, uh, not that day on your date, and plan to be uh, to participate, the Lord Himself. It's ready. It will do you good. It will encounter you. You will not be the same again. And you will sing a new song. The Lord bless you as you get ready. My dear people of God, the Lord bless you. I trust you are good. And I trust that the Lord has been keeping you. He will continue to keep you in the mighty name of Jesus. I'd like to inform you that our annual retreat, 30 Hours with God, is coming up again precisely this month of June. From 26th Friday, 6 p.m. through 27th uh, Saturday, midnight. Uh, this year's program is different because we are not converging in a place because of the obvious. And the Lord has instructed us to uh, gather online. So we're going to be streaming, we're going to be broadcasting online. People are going to attend uh, 30 hours at the confines and convenient of their rooms. As such, uh, it requires a special uh, gadgets unlike the usual since we're going to be broadcasting for uh, effective broadcast that will be a blessing to God's people will require some gadgets will require a high profile uh, resolution camera will require a projector will require at least three uh, core i7 laptops and some other gadgets will require uh, uh, a dedicated uh, entire provision will require diesel to, for power backup and very many of such. I want to encourage you, uh, even with the reality of the times, that I know there is something you can give. Peter and James were approached by that arm, by that uh, 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 paralyzed man, by the gate of the temple called Beautiful. And they said, Look, we don't have silver and gold to give you, but there is something we have. We have the name of Jesus in Acts chapter 3, uh, verse 6. And in the name of Jesus Christ, they made that man whole. I know you have something to give. Maybe you have friends that can assist. Maybe you have debt, or maybe you have assets. Maybe you have some of these guardians that can be of assistance to us. The Lord will appreciate you. Remember, even in the in the in the wilderness, just Christ saw that there was need to feed the multitude. The Bible says he asked the people, well, how shall we take care of this uh, multitude of people? Uh, in John 6, 5 to 9. The Bible says he himself knew what to do. God knows what to do. And they are pushing a young lad there. Maybe you are that young lad, or maybe you have that young lad with the five loaves and two fishes around you. So the Lord is trusting on you. Recall, he said in this word also, in 7 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7, that the Lord loves a cheerful giver. The Lord is still trusting on us, even with the reality of time, that you will come to his aid and make this program a reality. 
Recall is a program for revival, for healing, for deliverance, where the people of God are revived, where healing and deliverance takes place, where the truth about foundation is being preached. The Lord will still want this program as He has commanded us to take place effective this year and be a blessing to multitude. So the Lord is counting on you. And as you make yourself available with that which you have, God will bless you greatly. Thank you so much for your benevolence. Lord bless you.